Good day there, wherever you are. This is uh, a little presentation, also a shout of gratitude, shout for need of help, and yeah, a little view into what is happening here. To give you a little bit of a setting, we are here at the edge of so-called civilization. We are exploring alternatives, um, rethinking our status quo, and we believe that this is a crucial part of uh, also the Extinction Rebellion because it's very hard to point fingers and um, claim to know who is guilty and responsible. Very often it seems very obvious, but in general we are somehow all involved um, and it's not that easy. And I think it's easiest to, to just blame ourselves if we want to play this play game, blame game. And the best thing, of course, before we change others is change our own lives. And yeah, that's, that's really a big choice um, because that's really one where we have to think and live outside of our comfort zone, um, dare adventure beyond what we know how to operate. And so, that brings me to the nomad town. Uh, in the background you see the nomad town in eastern Finland. We have um, over there is a group tent. There's a yurt where I'm living in. Um, then there is the central town square. Um, another tent for living and cooking over there is a tiny house that is built from this one there from um, elements. And what you don't see is growing places where we grow food and um, yeah, so what are resilience hubs about maybe? Should I start first with this or what does this stop word mean? Um, maybe I think I start with the understanding of rebellion. It's, it's really like we have to provide alternatives, explore alternatives and this is what resilience hubs do. So the idea of resilience hubs is to explore resilient lifestyles, explore ways that might work because we see what we currently have does not work, right? We cannot consume more than one planet. So we have to explore some alternatives, look into what options and choices we have. And yeah, some of these choices apparently see, are really, really tough choices um, to make, but to live them seems so far at least easier than, than um, it appeared before making the choice. So, for example, last August I moved into the yurt because I understood that small shelters um, are more likely to function. Um, mobile shelters that don't need much energy to heat and uh, that can be moved and that don't require energy all the time. That don't need resources like hardware stores um, to maintain them and that can be off-grid. And yeah, that was a huge step to, to do because I have no experience with this kind of lifestyle. But after the first winter here in Finland with temperatures down to minus 24 degrees Celsius, um, I have discovered that, yeah, why didn't I do this earlier? So that's just one example of, of difficult choices. And there's a lot more difficult choices that we are facing. And I would actually summarize it into that we have life and death choices. So we have to choose, do we want to continue with what we are currently doing, which has more in common with suicide than with living or thriving or survival. Um, and on top of this, we are killing many other species on a daily basis with our suicidal lifestyle. Um, huge problem, of course, we don't realize that we are in a survival situation. We don't understand what it means that our food requires more energy to bring it to our table than what we get back from eating this food and our dependency on destructive, fragile and um, yeah, very complex systems is something we usually almost take for granted and don't think about it. So the most urgent thing in the moment, in my opinion, is to yeah, rethink our status quo, explore alternatives, um, create something that might be able for our offspring to be safely copied, something that might be safe for future generations, not only of humans, but many other animals and other species. And resilience hubs do just this, explore, 
trying to be as high on the sustainability scale as possible, trying to reach out as much as possible to local communities, that there is much possibility to participation. So this is also why the resilience up here, the Nomad Town in Yoensu is really on the edge of town. It's, there's a bus stop right here, it's easy to reach. And there's possibilities for schools, uh, we hope after the summer to, uh, after the summer vacation to take part here in, exp in, in experiments and maybe school gardens um, or having their classes here outside. So that's also invitation to the local schools, welcome and other um, organizations or even businesses. Um, we try to measure our kind of sustainability by looking at how much fossils we use, how much money we use and how much rubbish we, we make. Um, and yeah, that might be one way to measure sustainability. I don't know if uh, what else we can do, but it's trying. So that's Resilience Hubs. Um, ours happens to be like having the component of mobility built into it. So we are like a mobile eco-village. There are many eco-villages and other communities that already fulfill the criteria of Resilience Hubs, um, main, namely being, being off-grid and trying to reach high level of sustainability. And they don't need to be mobile. Um, I just believe that having this mobility built in uh, as an option is close to what we know has worked for the most part of human history. Semi-nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyles have worked for most part of human history. Of course, the world was a different place with much less people. Um, but still, so far, it doesn't seem like a bad idea. Also, like getting independent of motorized transportation um, is an aim to look at. So yeah, it's a lot of rethinking, uh, creating a new status quo, lots of conflicts, really interesting conflicts. Uh, one of them, for example, is now that also in this video, um, we need help, right? We need help. We are just a few people in the beginning and um, it's, it takes a lot of time, effort, energy to, to stake out, find out where all the resources are, what, who are the neighbors, what do they need, what can we offer them, what can they offer us, where are good places to source materials. Um, what associations are operating in the area with who to connect and, and that takes a lot of energy and something that we for example desperately need is we need a central hub right that's in in our vision that's a wagon that can be pulled by by a tractor maybe uh, and that provides a central infrastructure that can be shared so a storage for tools for example um, a storage for the group kitchen and very important a sauna a laundry place where um, we can wash ourselves, where we can wash our clothes and ideally also a little bit of a guest room. That might be two wagons, um, uh, that might be one wagon. But for this we really need help, um, also financial help, because a lot of things that are available secondhand are available for money. Even though that uh, free economy and free skilling are, yeah, certainly the way to go. But uh, at least how it seems, in my opinion. But we need some financial resources also. Also this place here, we are renting it. Um, at the same time, we are offering our own services, like for example, sustainability consulting, wilderness guiding, and other skills like as much for free as possible or in return for other things than money. But so there's little money coming in and we need money, we have expenses. Um, and in a way we are working really hard to explore something for the society. There's no job description to it. It's all volunteer basis and um, officially we've, like we are unemployed people, right? Um, or unemployed or how do you say, I don't know, without work, do it on in Finnish. So yeah, we need, um, first of all, actually what we need is people. So if you see this video, if you feel like, yep, there might be something to this. Um, building a resilient hub in your neighborhood or coming here to live with us for a few days, a few weeks or maybe a few years. Um, that's for sure highly welcomed and necessary and needed. Um, ideally, there would be resilient hubs in many places. And yeah, so we need people, we need cooperation, we need money, some still, yes, trying to get away from it. But in the moment, we still do need money. And also, um, we need some tools. So ideally, everything secondhand, um, 
hand tools, right? What is really good would be nice to have something where we can muscle power things. So that was pretty much it um, from the resilience hubs, our needs, um, also the, ex the connection to Extinction Rebellion. And something that I would still like to throw in is I would like to emphasize the importance and usefulness of this STOP tool. STOP is um, a tool used in survival situations to um, avoid panic and come up with a suitable plan. STOP, stop, sit down, go on strike, tea, um, have some tea, right? It's a great environment where you can think and um, first of all, thank, right? Gratitude opens the mind to positive thinking. So thank, think, what are your six survival priorities? Are they covered in a sustainable way? What is the situation? Are you actually in a survival situation? Yes or no? And uh, what are the immediate priorities? And yeah, that is quite an interesting one when we look at our society and our current status quo. We are far away from our basic needs. So it's really the, what is what do I need? And what is nice to have um, versus need to have or need to do, nice to do. Always observe what are the options, the opportunities, um, orientating, right? What can we do? What is already good? What can we continue with? Uh, what can we adopt from elsewhere? Copy-paste solutions are usually available, most of them based on communication um, and, and skill sharing and sharing, right? And a lot of like rethinking, reducing, recycling, reducing, big one. Um, P is to choose positive. We know from uh, lots of stories about survival that choosing to be positive, believing that we can do it, is an essential ingredient for successful survival. Um, and why not? We don't know if we can fix it. We don't know if we can win this fight, uh, but we know that this fight needs to be fought and we might as well believe that we can fight it and that we can win it um, because it's, it's a great motivator and um, yeah, why not feel good, right? I think uh, happiness is a choice. Being positive is a choice and then making a plan for the next month in case of the full moon full stop, a tool that we use here in the Nomad Town that I hope that we would like to spread this tool, the stop tool, also the full moon full stop connected to the full moon being independent of um, or neutral of, of religions or any kind of man-made borders uh, and then being a global event. So like one day per month where the world stops, like we have seen people in COVID-19 times we are capable of stopping to quite a high degree and I think we can do this once a month for a day uh, focusing on the priorities and getting our life in order. Um, it's a tool that helps finding personal solutions. Go would be the one after the stop, being good, being one, going for it. Um, I think that's the obvious one and that's really the hard one actually because this is the choice we need to make. Uh, maybe right now in this moment we have a huge amount of things to do. We have a huge amount of change we need to do. But the biggest change takes the smallest action. And the biggest change is the decision to be part of the solution. It's, uh, it's a decision that you can make right now, um, getting up and, and doing things um, and going beyond the talking and blaming and finding out what solutions work in your neighborhood, in your street, in your garden in your household, in your family, in your apartment, maybe. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Um, that's the Nomad Town, that's Resilience Hubs, that's the stop tool. And yeah, we like to serve you, uh, like to serve the local communities and try to keep the big picture in mind, um, thriving, uh, striving for deep nature connection as the number one medicine that our world seems to need the most, getting passionate passionate and in love with the planet and and the community and yeah that's I think pretty much it I um, wish you can share this video if you feel like it uh, if you find something useful in here and please very much get back with questions um, comments advice critics anything all comments are welcome reach out to us we try to help have a good time and take care. Love you. Bye-bye.